Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are in Montana and I'm gonna go over all the gear that I brought for this year's elk hunt and all the gear that I would change for next year. First, talk about the rifle. We have a Seekins Precision Havoc Element chambered in 300 Win Mag and of course, went with the brand new Voodoo X 2 to 12. This gun was an absolute dream. This is definitely one thing I would not change at all. 300 Win Mag absolutely did the job. Next, tripod. This one was a little bit on the heavy side. Uh, I don't think I would change it for next year. The only thing I might do is change the head and potentially the mounting system. Instead of going with a saddle, might go to a direct mount. Other than that, worked out really well. I didn't have to use it for this year's hunt. I actually ended up using my backpack, but that was just the position that I was in. One thing that I would absolutely change is a proper bino bag. This, as you guys can see, is not a bino bag, but, you have my binos, very, very important. My first pair, uh, I went with a 10X, worked really well. Um, but as you can see, zippers and hunting don't go very well. Of course, you gotta have a range finder because you're gonna go anywhere from 80 to 400 yards. So you really gotta know what that distance is that you're shooting at. Uh, and then of course in here, got a couple of little things, gloves, because weather can change instantly. Uh, I got some ammo and of course, you need a place to store that really special round. So this is a keeper. And something else that's really cool in here are, I don't know if you guys know this, I absolutely did not know this, but elk actually have ivory. And that is a piece of the ivory that we pulled from my elk this year. So we're gonna polish that up and maybe turn it into something special. So big change, of course, is this pack. Not the right setup at all. On my body, of course, I've always kept a knife. Microtech does the job. Then I also brought another flashlight, the Streamlight. That worked out really well. Used that a lot at night in base camp, so I wouldn't change any of those two things. My pack for this year is an Arteryx bag. Uh, actually really comfortable. Fits really well on those long hikes. The only thing I didn't like about it is there's no compartments. So it's essentially one big open cavity. But in the situations that I was in, it wasn't that bad because I could pretty much rip this open, get into anything that I needed, and then get it right back up. But this bag did the trick because this is how I actually took my shot, worked out really well, propped against the rock, and couldn't have asked for a better shot than that. So let's dive into this. Okay, hand warner. Definitely gotta have a hand warner. Wouldn't change that for next year. So as you could see, when you open into this pouch, it's just one big compartment that, not necessarily the worst thing, next year I might organize this better so I can get to the items much faster. I uh, brought a tourniquet. I mean, why would you not have a tourniquet in a situation like this? Something that is very important in Montana while hunting, you must be wearing an orange vest. Um, obviously visibility, hunter safety. This is something that you must be wearing at all times once you start your hunt. Layers, layers, layers. Uh, obviously went with our Kuyu outer layers. That worked out really well. Have a couple base layers under there. And then I did bring some additional layers with me. I would absolutely not change that because once again, the farther up in the mountains you get, you don't know what that weather is going to be. So there's no reason not to have this in your bag. Switched out hats quite a bit uh, in those really windy situations. Was able to put on the beanie. That helped tremendously because it got really, really cold at times when the wind started whipping around. Sunglasses, obviously, why would I not bring those next year? Another beanie, first aid kit. I mean, 100%, you gotta have that. Why not? I didn't know what knife to bring, so I went with a SOG. Um, obviously, I was not going to be using this for field dressing, but I was thinking about attaching this to my bino bag, but unfortunately, once again, this was not the right one, so I couldn't really have this on me. Uh, next year, I would definitely set up this bag much differently, and I would probably have this knife attached to me. Headlamp, very, very important. Use this quite a bit in those early, early morning starts. Typically, you're gonna get set up in the truck way before sunrise, and you're gonna start that approach pretty much in the dark. So this was very, very helpful, especially with the red light. Uh, it's not going to draw too much attention to game animals. Uh, some more layers, and then, 
I did end up bringing a field dressing knife. Uh, didn't use it because this was a guided hunt. Uh, our guide Ray is unbelievable and much, much better than I ever could be. And uh, he ended up field dressing our elk. Uh, it was just a privilege to watch him work and how professional he is and how cleanly he did that process. Um, but once again, I wasn't sure of that situation. So I ended up bringing a little field dressing knife. Um, not necessarily the best choice. I'm sure there's a lot of better options out there, but this is what I ended up bringing with me. Then of course, you can never have enough of this. You don't know what your day is going to look like. You don't know if you're gonna miss those crucial shots. So the last thing you would ever want on a hunt is to say, I ran out of ammo. So kept a full box with me, especially if there was other hunters in our group that needed some. It's always good to be the guy that has plenty of ammo. So overall with this experience, I'm pretty happy with what I brought. But the three things that I would definitely change and take in consideration is weight. I definitely added some things in here I didn't need. And most importantly is your bino pack, that front setup, because you're glassing constantly. These binos are coming in and out of this kit all day long, your range finder. So to have them easily accessible and not make noise through zippers, uh, there's a lot of brands that are making magnets that flip open, which is a really good solution to that and having a little bit more gear up front. And third thing, I would definitely go into upgrading my binos. These are a relatively inexpensive pair. Uh, actually, they're very inexpensive. Uh, they are the 10 to 24 Upland Optics. I'm not gonna lie, I got these on Amazon. They were under $200. They definitely did a good job, um, but not all things are created equal. So next year, I'm really gonna go and invest in a good set of binos because during the daytime, these do work really well, but in those low light situations, the lenses don't bring in that light that other high-end binos do, and that is definitely where I'm lacking when you're glassing the mountaintops. So that is definitely a big piece that I'm gonna upgrade. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wish you all the luck with your upcoming hunts and love to hear about your stories that you have in the future. Thanks for watching, as always. See you next time.